Welcome to Electron Line, and here's our next hybridization orbital, sp3d2. And where that comes into play is for molecules that have six valence electrons, such as sulfur, wanted to make six bonds, like with the fluorine atom. And so it makes uh, sulfur hexafluoride. Now, how does that happen? Well, if you look at the electron structure of sulfur, we see that the 1s orbital is filled, the 2s orbital is filled, the 2p orbitals are filled, the 3s orbital is filled, and the 3s is not quite filled, but the first orbital, uh, oh, this is not 3s, what am I talking about? This is the 3p, this is sound pretty good. There we go. The 3p orbitals are almost filled, one of them is completely filled, and the other two have one electron in them. So, uh, standard, logic should say, well, there's only two electrons available for bonding, so why does that molecule exist? Why do we have sulfur hexafluoride? And also, the shape of the molecule, we know it's not going to be planar like that, it's, all, it's going to be an octahedron, so it's going to look like this, with two of the bonds sticking straight up, one up, one down, and then the other four in a plane perpendicular to those other two, so it's going to look exactly like that. So there's nothing in the structure of the orbitals here that will allow that to happen, unless, of course, the orbitals become hybridized, and that's exactly, of course, what happens. Let me look for my red pen here. So what's going to happen here? There's going to be a promotion of two electrons into the 3D orbitals, even though they're empty for now. This, it's, what's going to happen is that one of these electrons in the P orbitals is going to come over here and occupy one of the 3D orbitals, and one of the 3S or, uh, electrons is going to be promoted and occupy one of the 3D orbitals. So that this one is now gone, this one is now gone, and all of a sudden we have one, two, three, four, five, six electrons ready to do some bonding. But then realizing, of course, that the structure of this molecule is such a way that every one of these bonds has the same length and the same energy associated with the bond, that, of course, that could not happen when we have three different kinds of orbitals executing this bond, these bonds. And so what happens is we, in nature is that these electrons hybridize the orbitals in such a way that the shape changes so that they can all be at the same energy and all be in the same structure. So we have now six electrons residing in a hybridized orbital called the, 3S, the, the sp3d2 orbital. And what that looks like, if we draw that, so here is our x -ax uh, the z-axis, the y-axis, and the x-axis. That's the traditional way of writing the three-dimensional axis in math. So then we have an orbital sticking straight up, and this is one of the hybridized orbitals coming straight up like this, and a small little tail in the other direction. We have the same going straight down like that, the orbital coming straight down, and a small little tail in the opposite direction. So these are two of the six hybridized orbitals. The other four, they will occur in the plane along the x and y axis. And so here we have one sticking straight out with a small little tail coming in this direction. We have another one going straight out in the back side with a small little tail this way. We have one coming out here with a small little tail this way. And we have one going out here with a small little tail this way. Now, typically in a book, they will ignore these small little extensions, these small little appendages on the opposite direction of the main lobe, even though mathematically we know that they have to be there, although the electrons will not reside very long within those portions of the lobes. They will typically reside in the bigger lobes, the outer lobes like that. And if you can imagine that each one of those then contains one of those six electrons, we now have ourselves a structure ready to bond. And then of course, since fluorine is very electronegative, it only needs one more electron to make a full octet, the fluorines will, more than, will be more than happy to attach themselves at each of those six hybridized orbitals like that, forming the, uh, what we call the sulfur hexafluoride molecule. And again, the molecule will look exactly like that. So you can see, yeah, it's kind of interesting. It doesn't matter which way you hold it, it looks the same from all different directions, but it's octahedral. It basically, it's two pyramids with four sides, if you can imagine. There's a side, there's a side, there's a side, there's a side, and then there's one on the bottom. So two pyramids with the bases glued together, sticking out in opposite directions. Since there's eight sides, the shape of that is called octahedral. And that's the result of the hybridization into the sp3d2 orbital.